And this hangout is live and we are on the air. Welcome to Omni Bros special noon edition on a Memorial Day Monday. We are happy to be able to present a special show to you because as I said in my post on the Omnibus page, upper level management known as our wives placed an edict that there would be no show tonight. So we fooled them. We said, we'll do a show at noon. And I'm Omnidog, and with me is my famous co-host, Omar, from Near Mint Condition. Omar, how's it going? It's going all right, brother. How are you? How was your weekend? You had a good weekend? So far, so good. Yeah. I'm always happy being on the air with you. This always makes me, even if I'm in a bad mood ahead of time, this always puts me in a good mood. But I was in a good mood coming into this, so I feel good. I'm going to screw that up for you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh -oh. I, I feel the same, man. That's why I was like, yeah, let's do it. I don't have anything going on this morning. This afternoon we do. So I'm like, yeah, let's not skip a show. Let's just go ahead and do it. And, you know, uh, give our – is InStockTrades.com having a sale this weekend? Are they having a Memorial Day sale? I believe so, right? Don't they usually have some kind of Memorial Day sale? Oh, are they? I turned off my mail. I'll have to look. <laughs> InStockTrades.com, our sponsor, where you can get up to 50% off your collected editions – Loyalty discounts add two to three percent to that. Every quarter you get an Omnibros Live discount. And if you order fifty dollars or more in the United States, you get free shipping, fabulous packaging, and brilliant customer service. That's in stocktrades.com. Uh, and I'm sorry, I don't know if they have a memorial <laughs> sale they're, they're, or not. I haven't they, checked my email. They are not. They just made an announcement. I thought I got an email. It was a, they made an announcement about the fourth world omnibus that they are getting the replacement copies and they're shipping replacement copies out. If you had sent them the cover with um, like an order that you've processed through there. So, yeah. Ah, okay. So that's, that's what, that's what the big announcement is. Okay. Well, that's cool. Nice to hear from them. And I guess that there's some problem with BPRD hell on earth too. I think I got a notice about that too. There's a miss. Yeah, there is a, I believe a missing page or two from there. And um, they are. They said not to return them. That they will ship them. This is in stock trades. I don't know how Amazon is handling it. Right. Uh, not to worry about it. Keep it, and they will ship you out a new copy when it comes in. And I believe it comes in in August or oh man, I want to say August or October, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. We get some like European Omni Bros here joining us. That's awesome. Yeah, and some West Coasters too. Who who uh, I see just woke, up. just woke up. <laughs> yeah. So happy Memorial Day, everybody. Well, Memorial Day here in America. Um, right. Happy bank holiday over in England or something, if it's a bank holiday. <laughs> so, yes. What uh, What is the topic today? I have no idea. I just said I would join you because I love talking to you. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, what are well, we talking about? <laughs> I put halls, previews, and reads, but we can talk about um, whatever you want, really. Um I mean, we can we can do um, halls, previews, and reads, or we can we can talk about a different topic if you like. I mean, halls, uh, previews, and reads. Well, um, or we can buzz right through halls, previews, and reads and see what the chat wants to talk about. My halls, previews, and reads, reads for sure. Been reading quite a lot. Uh so I, I lost my job on Friday. I'm and, very sorry. And you and I have talked about this. Yeah. It? It's just I've I've come to terms like it was it was it was I could see it coming and it was something outside of my control, like I, and it sucks. Um, so now it's um, it my my hauls are kind of will be probably lighter and you know there's a lot of things I've had pre-ordered because I've done DCBS and things like that but um, but I am reading a shit ton especially since I was sitting at home Friday without human interaction all morning. <laughs> I just read the crap out of my backlog of comics. Um, so I knew there was a reason why I bought so many books every month. Because <laughs> one day I, I, I wouldn't have the time. Um, but that's okay, man. It's, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm staying positive and I'll get through this. And uh, my, my kids are on uh, summer break too. So we're, you know, we're going to hang out. You get to know those two little girls a lot more. And, um, some comics and keep applying and hopefully something will come up 
So I, that, that's that's where I want that's that's where my life is at right now. Right. I I firmly believe that you are gonna. I said this before the chat, but I firmly believe you are gonna land on your feet in a place that's even better, and you're gonna be happier. And you'll look back on this as the first step in in a more positive uh, direction in your life. I firmly believe that you have the people skills, the tech skills. You got it all, brother. So. Well, thanks, man. I mean, it means a lot to me coming from you and, and everybody in the chat. Thank you, guys. Um, I will be fine. I thought about like uh, just drinking for a week and then <laughs> throwing a big beard and just having a you know wearing a wife beater and my tidy whities around all day. You know, becoming like stereotypically unemployed kind of guy. But I'm like, you know, that's just not me. I'll drink, but I'm. <laughs> I'll take showers too. Um, <laughs> Good. So, yeah, that's where I'm at, man. But we can definitely talk about reads. Uh, I look forward to this now more than ever because I think this is a positive thing in our lives. And, uh, you know, I feel really connected to everybody here. So it's nice. Yeah. Um, so you had hauls. What, what did you haul, man? Uh, actually, I did not. My you haul, I, called it hauls. I know. I, but I, uh, Giovanni suggested that I show um, – uh, vinyl and statues and pops so that's oh, what i'll show yeah, quite, a, quite a bit of that huh speaking well, of pops i watched the documentary oh i um, saw that um it like funko I saw pop. About it. yeah is that good yeah uh i saw a documentary uh it was it was really interesting because i saw the toys that made us season two and then it was like one of those uh recommended documentaries it was like the story of funko and it's pretty interesting because I, I had forgotten uh how um how different that that company was when it first started like back in the late 90s it was pretty interesting like just watching it's about an hour and a half i can't remember what it's called it's like fun for funko or something like that yeah i think yeah. it was um, i think you would really like it to see the progression of these what they started out with and the love that went into it and how many like people were really working there at the time and see it evolve into the little things that you got behind you yeah, I, I definitely want to see that. I um, I, that might be something good for me to watch with my daughter since my daughter's over here today. Maybe she because she loves pops too. Um, I uh, that is a great idea. I'll watch that documentary with her. That is a great idea. I will watch that with her. Speaking of yeah, go yeah. All right, I know you and your daughter are really tight. I think both of you will would really will really get a kick out of it. It's good. That's cool. I I'm definitely doing that. Um, because yeah, she loves pops too. And this is the pop I collected, Venom Pool. You can see it there. That's a better shot of it. I have. This is the pop in a box exclusive, uh, which took forever to come in. So What's long that I forgot pop? about it. Is that like a loot crate thing popping sort up of, i think yeah it just this uh, it showed up on my email that this was available and i thought and it wasn't very expensive so i thought that looks cool but i have no idea i have you know i'm a trade waiter so i have no idea what's going on with gwenum or venom pool or venom gwenum pool or anybody so <clears throat> i'll i'll appreciate this more once i've read the story but I'm I'm really happy I got that. Then, uh, as far as vinyl, I got some record store day things. Uh, I love Black Moth Super Rainbow. I got two 45s from Black Moth Super Rainbow. They're like a psychedelic band. That's really cool. Those vinyls do not look psychedelic at all. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, and I got my new favorite band is still corners i'm sure you've never heard of them still corners i don't even remember where i discovered them but uh this is my kind of music it's like ambient shoegaze morphine pop whatever you want to call it it's really great god i love this group still corners i had to get it from europe um it's but it's from sub pop which is made here in america but what would you get it from europe it was only available in europe i couldn't find it locally yeah, no, I couldn't find it in the, um, I couldn't find it. it. They may be out of print. I'm not sure. They weren't expensive, but 
I, I had to order them from someplace I don't usually order them from. Um, and then you'll appreciate this. This is the Uncharted 4 soundtrack. Oh, yes. Nice. This is something my daughter and I played together. So this, um, the music in this is great. So I we listened to it um, on uh, Thursday. And uh, that was good. And then last but not least. So your daughter listens to vinyl as well? When I make her, yeah. She brought her computer down and I said, let's listen to Uncharted soundtrack. And she said, okay. And so we sat down here while I wrote up some stuff for my channel and she did uh, fanfic on her on her um, laptop. So yeah, <laughs> we just listened to music. Uh, that's it. awesome. Like, uh, cause you know, vinyl takes, you, you have to appreciate music. You, it's not like listening to iTunes. You can't just skip right. something, right? Like you have to, you have to flip it like every two hours or whatever. And well, so I, think yeah. that, I think that's cool that your and daughter's then, learning to appreciate this stuff. Yeah. And then, Man of Steel, the album that Michael Rafferty gifted to me. This is an expensive out-of-print album, and Michael Rafferty was kind enough to make me a gift of this. Oh, wow. Hans Zimmer, um, and I actually read it. I'm sorry. I listened to it while I was reading Secret Warriors, so it was perfect background music for that. Uh, wrong universe there. Slick. I know, but it was still perfect <laughs> music. No, I love, I love that soundtrack. <laughs> love and that then, soundtrack. Yeah, let's see if I can show a statue I got. Let me unplug. Whoops, now I'm unplugged from my headphones. Let me plug my headphones back in. I don't know if I've showed this yet. But this is a Harley Quinn statue that I got. What is she aiming at there? <laughs> she's got a bomb in her hand. And she's and about to shoot. In the other oh. hand. And if you can see, there's a little Batman right there. Yeah, nice. The Joker face. And she's got a jet pack that's actually propping her up. And I got that. I had a bunch of sideshow credit, or rewards as they call it. And so it didn't cost me much. It stayed within budget for those of you who are counting my money out there. And I know you are legion who um, are counting my money. Uh, I stayed within budget because I used um, rewards. Jesse, say what? I have a T. <laughs> Cycle Cleveland answered the question. People know me better than I know me. Cycle Cleveland. <laughs> what kind of record player you got, Jess? Yeah, Cycle Cleveland's right. That's what it is. <laughs> so I didn't haul any books, but I got. Them. That's why. That feeds into the theory that you and John P are the same guy. <laughs> he is literally answering your questions that people are asking you. Right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I that's what I hauled. Didn't haul any books, but I um, hauled stuff. No, no, that's great. Um, I hauled nothing. So, um, well, I got my DCBS order coming in, but I'll, so I'll do my end of the month haul. Okay. That I, that I usually do. I've got like uh, the Wolverine Return of Weapon X and things like that. Uh, but yeah. So what you've been reading, reading a boatload. Yeah. You, what have you been yeah. reading a boatload of? Uh, caught up with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the IDW run. Still solid because um, I have the hardcovers. And then caught up with uh, Saga, Deadly Class, um, Walking Dead. Don't know why I still read that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. And um, went back and read some Uncle Scrooge and Donald Duck by Don Rosa. Ooh, nice. Starting off with The Son of the Sun and uh, Return to Plain Awful. And then what was the other book that I read? I'm reading Planet Hulk for my other show that I do. New or, reader, old reader? Yeah, man. That one. Um, nice. So I'm reading the uh, – we're, we're starting off with the prequel – the Fantastic Four prequel, and then the horrible Daniel Way thing, and then uh, I guess <laughs> Illuminati. What was it? The Illuminati issue four, or something like that. And then reading the Planet Hulk. That was uh, that was suggested to us from Philip, who's in the chat right now. And um, I read some Cable and X 
uh, Yoast X Force. I've been reading a lot <laughs> X Force. I guess that's what happens when I'm like I, I can't let my brain sit here because if I, if I hit, sit here and just think and listening to like the air conditioning or something, I just it's not good. No, then, I agree with that. Same with me. I can't just sit alone. I got to have music playing and I got to be reading. Yeah, Too reading many- and I, I watched some movies that I hadn't seen in a long time, like Lethal Weapon. Oh, good. Uh, um. And things like that, but ma- mainly reading, yeah. And there was something else I read that I hadn't read before that I really liked. What the hell was it? Mm. Man, I wish I could remember it. Something by Bendis? No, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I've read most of Bendis stuff. Um, I read it. I read the Superman special. Caught up. Oh. With- Oh, oh and, caught up, and caught up with the uh, X Men titles. I did caught. Tell me uh, about the Superman special. It's solid, man. It's like four little mini stories, and like like Riley and I suggested, you don't really. I mean, you don't need to be caught up to enjoy it. It's okay. just, um, it's a good, it's a good read. Uh, I enjoyed every one of them. I thought they were good. Um, X Men Red. I'm still having fun with that. All new Wolverine wrapped up. Um, which would make the perfect omnibus size. Mm. Um, do, 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 what, what was the other books that I read? Um, I still don't know what the hell Astonishing X. I, I don't. I, I, I'm not enjoying that book. I think Riley said he liked it. Mm. But I, that's the one with the Return of Professor X, sort of Phantom X character. Uh, um, and uh, read. Uh, oh yeah, the new Avengers by Jason Aaron and. Uh, Ed McGinnis. So I'm kind of digging that. I like the issue two a lot better. Oh, okay, good. I like that. And um, rereading Jason Aaron Thor right now. So that's where that man, I read a lot. So what about you, brother? What have you been reading? Well, I read Sif Journey into Mystery, the complete collection, which oh, I had man. never read before. That's not included in anything, right? I like, not to my knowledge. I as far as I know, this is it. Um But I really, it started out a little slow for me, but uh, it really picked up about a quarter of the way through, and I ended up thoroughly enjoying this. I I enjoyed, you know, the little interaction I got with Lady Sif and the previous incarnations of Thor and whatever other, ever other appearances she's made. Um, But this was really well done. It's by... um, I think it's the first issue is by Kelly Sue DeConnick. And then the whole journey into mystery run was by Catherine Eminen and uh, really great art, solid art throughout the whole damn thing. I really enjoyed the art immensely throughout the whole thing. And the writing was solid. So it was, it was fun and funny and dramatic. And, and I dug the heck out of lady. So <laughs> then who's Matt- the creative team, who was the writer? You said Catherine Eminen. Yeah, she wrote the majority of it. Yeah. Okay, I like that art. The what you were yeah. showing. Yeah, it's really pretty. Um, then I read Mother Panic, a Vertigo, not Vertigo. What are they calling it? Milkman, young animal. Young animal, yeah. milkman. <laughs> yes, milkman. <laughs> yeah, uh, this was a surprise. I had had this on my shelf forever and just never read it. Then I saw in the Omnibus Group, Matt Higgins recommended it, so I picked it up, and this is a solid, fun read. I'm getting volume two tomorrow. Um, what this, is this about? I, I see the name Gerard Way. Wait, no, that's an afterword. Never mind. Who's the right, creative team? The writers, Jody Hauser and Tommy Lee Edwards, are the artist and writer. Jody Hauser's writing it. Um, she is in Gotham City. She dresses up like this. She's a celebutant that has vengeance on her mind. She's not part of the Bat family. Batwoman and Batman make cameos in this, but um, she's out for vengeance for reasons as unyet known. She's super rich and has all these great gadgets. Um, we're, we're not sure yet about her motivations, but there's hella action in this thing that's really good. And uh, this has been the best young animal book that I've read. I did not dig... Uh, their Doom Patrol. Um, Kate really? Car- no, not I like didn't. That. Now, that is Gerard Way, wasn't it? Correct. And I, I like Gerard Way's stuff, but I didn't care for what he did with Doom Patrol. Um, That's sad because like Umbrella Academy was practically Doom Patrol and X-Men. 
yeah, I I loved Umbrella Academy. Um, and wait, I know there's a book on my shelf that he wrote that is so great. And why am I blocking on it? It's it's everybody's favorite book. The Fabulous Killjoys. Um, no, oh. didn't Gerard Way write? Um, L the true lives of the fabulous day, uh, day tripper. Nope. That is oh. Fabio moon and, oh. um, his brother. <laughs> okay. All, all our cred just went out the window. Uh, <laughs> uh, I did love umbrella Academy though. Um, oh, yeah. and then good. I read almost, I'm almost done with secret warriors. The beginning of my Hickmanathon summer read. And as I said, I was listening to, Man of Steel as the background music, and you pointed out there were two different universes um, <laughs> to embarrass me. I didn't know if that you were aware or not. <laughs> but this is a really great tale. Nick Shield at his finest. Nick Shield. Nick Fury. Nick Shield. <laughs> yeah, that shows how much I know. Nick Fury at his finest, out of Shield, starts um, his group of secret warriors. I had never read this before, and I burned through this on. Um, Saturday, and I just there's my place, so I just have a little bit more to go. Uh, but wow, this is a great book! I really, really like it. I'm That's really uh, getting into it. Bendis and um Hickman, right? Like, then Bendis co plot some of that stuff from at the beginning. I seem to recall, uh, because it uses the character Quake that was introduced in his secret war, created by Michael, ben Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev. Yeah. You are correct. Um, I, I remember enjoying that book, though. I hadn't read it in a long time, but when, as it was coming out. You're right. Um, Bendis does have writing credit in a couple issues here, and he is uh, um, given credit as co-writing it with Hickman. Uh, for As far as Dark Reign, New Nation, one through six of Secret Warriors, Mighty Avengers he wrote that's in this. So, um, yeah. So like he, like he co-created some of those characters. It's cool. Right. Oh, we have Ugly McGregor uh, in the chat. That's a rarity. Ugly, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, it is a super fast read and, and really fun. And that's, I mean, I'm burning through this the fastest I've ever burned through an omnibus to think I'm almost done with it after only a couple days. Uh, well, some, but, some nominees read really quick, though. Right. And then there's other things that just take forever, like, you know, Doom Patrol. Uh, yes, Kenny, <laughs> I, I will be reading Man of Steel uh, when, when it comes out next week, this week, right? Uh, yes, just to see, what, you know, where it goes. I'll give him a fair shot, see what happens. Um, I know it's already been solicited for hardcover collection come August or September, something like that, all six issues pretty mm -hmm. um you know I'm, I'm willing to give him a shot see what he does i've just enjoyed superman and action comics a lot and i haven't enjoyed them in a long time so sad to see that those creative teams leave and hopefully they'll be on to better things do you hear the rumor that uh grant morrison's gonna be writing uh green lantern Am i, I the didn't only hear that rumor yeah um, what was the source of that rumor bleeding cool or something I have no idea where it came <laughs> from. I, it was, uh, I was on Reddit and they were talking about it, how how Jordan and uh, the Green Lanterns is being canceled. And that just, and some people are already speculating that he, I think somebody approached him at a con or something about a book that he wanted to write. But I don't know where this original thing came from. Hmm. Cr Christopher Keel is asking, what condition do your IST books arrive in? Always in. I don't want to say always. I've been ordering them for over 10 years, but 98% of the time in really great condition. If I ever have issues, I email them and they either give me back money if I don't want to send it back or let me keep it and send me something if it's something damaged. But they're pretty good about catching that stuff. He said uh, he might be OCD, but the, the spines come mashed in. I've never That's, had spines mashed in. I'm surprised at that. Um I, I've never had a single problem within stock trades, and I frequently buy damaged books from them that come in in like better shape than what I find in a retail store just about. So yeah. I'm very surprised at that. 
Um, but like I said, I mean, there's been some instances where like they miss something that I'll either return and they'll make it into a damage cell. Um, but not very often. And I've been, yeah, been ordering from them for about over 10 years. So right about 98% of the time they, they send something in pristine condition. And every once in a while they'll have books like, uh, what was it? Batman and Robin, for example, that their whole stock and not just them, but like Amazon, their whole stock, like I think the top was uh, crinkled up a bit. So oh. everybody got a semi damaged copy. I did. I, uh, yeah, I got that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know if, if it was the first batch of that stuff. They were just sitting at a DC warehouse and they all got the same kind of damage. I, I never complained about it because I realized that everybody had it. So, right. Um, but yeah, that happens every once in a while. So yeah, man, just shoot them an email if you have any issues. Um, Avatar read Lady Mac Mechana. Lady Mechanica. Mechanica. Ah, one of That's my favorite books. Joe Benitez one. Right? Yeah. yeah. Love that book. He would be the only reason I get that book. Oh, it's really good writing too. Fabulous art and a really good story. Really? I really Who, oh, who's, yeah. Who's the writer? Is it Joe Benitez? He is for like the first few issues and then he turns it over to somebody else. But in um or maybe let me see here. Let me go get that book. I know you. Sec. I know you go on about it. I haven't read it. I was a fan of Joe Benitez when he was doing this book called Weapon Zero. Uh, this is back when I was doing reading or just looking at image artwork, and then he he kind of took. Uh, he left. I think Cyberforce. He was doing that too. Then he kind of left Image and started working for some of the big two books. Like I know he did a run with um, Dwayne McDuffie on Justice League. He did that. He did. He did some of the art in, in Justice League. But Jess raves on about this Lady Mechanica. It looks like a steampunk book, right? Yeah, it is very steampunk. Um, he wrote the whole, this is oversized hardcover. And of course, it's, as you say, it's got fabulous art. Um, he wrote this and then he turned it over to a guy last name Chen while he continued to draw it for Tablet of Destinies, um, which I haven't opened yet, but I've already read it. Um, yeah, I'm happy to rave about Lady Mechanica. I, Jiminy Crickets, I love this book. <laughs> Language. <laughs> I do. I love everything about this book. I um, I don't, I pick, I had it in floppy form and liked it um, on the recommendation from Third Eye Comics because they know my taste. And then I got it in trade paperback, and now I'm getting it in OHC, and I'm sending Fangirl my trade paperbacks. So she can enjoy the strong female protagonist that Lady Mechanica is. Very nice. What upcoming X-Men omnibuses are worth getting, assuming you already have Uncanny X, Volume 1 through 3? That is a question for you, Omar. Um, what's coming up? I think X-Men Revolution is coming. I don't know if, I mean, honestly, that's for the completest. That's the return of Chris Claremont writing X-Men on a monthly basis. Um, it was right after the Alan Davis run, and it led him to, what was the other series? Um, Extreme X-Men. But there's another book that I'd recommend. I recommend it to Jess, and that is The Wedding of Cyclops and Phoenix, because that... I think has a lot better stories and I, and I'm a Claremont fanboy by far, but I think the Nicieza stuff in there is solid. And even the Scott Lobdell and I'm not the biggest Scott Lobdell stuff. Like I love the whole proposal thing. Um, I thought that was a really pretty story and the wedding issue is wonderful. And I like the X-Men Avengers blood ties, which is the aftermath of the um, what's called fatal attractions. It's how, they deal with Magneto's siblings and things like that after his brain was shut off by Professor X. Um, I thought that was a pretty good crossover, and that crossover has never been reprinted in oversized format, so there's your chance. Mm. And then it also lines up perfectly with, uh, like I said, Fatal Attractions and the uh, Phalanx books, the Phalanx Covenant. So it's just one of those missing gap uh, books that we needed. And let's see, we're also getting a book you said not to get, which is Dark Phoenix. Yes, do not buy Dark Phoenix because all that material is collected in volume one and volume two of the X-Men, uh, uncanny X-Men omnibus by Claremont and Cockrum and John Byrne. 
So yes, you do not need those books or that book unless unless you really like the Dark Phoenix and you want to pay a hundred dollars for something <laughs> you already own. Because even the untold story of Dark Phoenix is collected in volume two. And another book that you're excited about, I believe, is Mutant Massacre. Is that an O eight? Is that an oversized or is that an Omni? Yes. So the Mutant Massacre is now an omnibus. Mm -hmm. It is going to uh, include all the issues that were missing between. Um, I'm sorry, leading up to the fall of the mutants. So this is really this is a huge deal for us X Men collectors, because before Mutant Massacre was just an oversized hardcover and it only collected the Mutant Massacre issues, um, including you know the X Factor run. But this stuff lines up everything up until Fall of the Mutants, including the X Factor issues and the Uncanny X Men issues. So this is great. This is another big gap that we're missing, and this is why strongly believe marvel is going to re-release all these out of print books eventually in omnibus format mm. all the mutants the impossible to find inferno i think they will come out I'm, I'm almost willing to bet that each one of those will be reprinted as a marvel omnibus instead of an oversized hardcover um yeah um the other thing that's hard to find is the messiah war story yeah, I'm hoping that they eventually release those in uh, an omnibus format because they could just put Messiah, they could put Messiah Complex and the X Force issues together, and then Second Coming and Messiah War and the X and the Crocia. I mean, it can be two omnis, the Colin Yost years. I mean, I, I mean, as a completist, I would love the Academy X stuff written by them as well, but I don't see them doing that because that stuff kind of leads up to the Messiah Complex and eventually X Force. Colin Yost X Force. Um. <laughs> uh, how many more big gaps are we missing, Omar? Asked Greco Billy Camp. We are missing um, 176 to 208. So that that's uncanny, and we're missing the X Men Alpha Flight um, story that crosses over into the annuals, the S Guardian stuff. Then we're missing uncanny X Men Annual Number Ten, which is the where Longshot joins the team with beautiful artwork by Arthur Adams, as well as Volume 9, or Annual 9. But I think Marvel is going to get greedy, and instil, instead of just releasing one Omni to include all that, they're going to put two Omnis. I almost guarantee they're going to do that. That two Omnibuses will be released in between uh, Uncanny Volume 3 and this Mutant Massacre Omnibus. Because, I mean, they know stupid people like me will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they could be super nice and release, you know, all this in one really big omnibus, but no way in hell they do that. They're gonna, <sighs> they're gonna fucking pad this out. They'll give us like some shitty mini series like Beauty and the Beast, even though it doesn't make any sense to put it there, or they'll put like issues of Dazzler in there or New Mutants and, and things like that, just to pad these two omnis out to make sure that we're gonna get two instead of one. But that's that's the big gap that's missing from the Claremont years. Once we get that, man. I mean, that's that's everything Claremont in oversized format. Which is the worst 90s <laughs> Batman event, Nightfall or No Man's Land? Oh, I enjoyed Everybody, everybody I, knows my answer to that. I enjoyed both of those. I, I think No Man's Land was a hell of a better story, though, by far. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't consider that actually a bad event. I, I enjoyed that run. Because, I mean, Contagion and Legacy were wonderful. I wish that was an omnibus. Then Cataclysm that led to Road to No Man's Land, No Man's Land. Great stuff, man. Uh, I have mine out of order. I got to put them back in order. I don't... Mm. I mean, it, it's so hard because I really like Nightfall, but I think out of the two, No Man's Land was a better story. Why do people like OHC over trade paperbacks? It's a good question. It's a great question. I like... um. You know, in trade paperbacks, here, I'll, I'll hold some up. So, you know, you have your, tr your standard trade paperback. This is a standard size trade paperback. This is the size of a comic book, literally. And they just put bind a bunch of comic books and put it in here. Uh, and then, sorry, this is the only oversize I have, but it's my Green Lantern. And you can see with Green Lantern Omnibus that lining it up to this, it's bigger. So you get bigger artwork. And... Well, of course, when you're dealing with omnibuses, you are also getting um, more story in there, and you're paying a bigger price. But you can tell how big the dimensions are. 
And then there's also the absolutes, which is huge artwork. So absolutes I keep for like stories I really, 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 really like, or I just enjoy the artwork. Hence why I own Wildcats Volume 1, Absolute Wildcats. That story fucking sucks, but I love Jim Lee's <laughs> artwork. <laughs> Nobody in their right mind should read that. <laughs> Except maybe Gabe. <laughs> yeah. And usually the pages are nicer. They're, you know, glossy pages when it, when you're dealing with oversized hardcovers. Um, most people, like uh, Runaways, for example, is a three-volume hard oversized hardcover. And all they're doing with the Omnibus is just putting those three hardcovers together, really. So... Um, if you own them, you have, you know, unless you really, really like the omnibus format, I would keep those. That's save what I'm doing. Save yourself a little money. And sometimes you can find them cheaper when the omnibuses are released. People like in the Facebook group that we're part of or eBay or Amazon will start dropping prices on those things because they want to pick up the Omni. Right. Um, but that was a good question. I love questions like that, that I can answer. The ones that you can answer. Exactly. <laughs> uh, e. Tyler Linval is taking uh, issue with your knocking wildcats. I'm sorry, E. Tyler. That story was ass. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Alan Moore stuff with art by Travis Cheris is good, but man, that other stuff was horror. Or James Robinson stuff was pretty good too. Though. I remember rereading that stuff. Don't be knocking wildcats, Omar. <laughs> it was my childhood too, man. But you know, uh, and, you know, I can I can freely admit that Chris Claremont also re wrote really bad stories too. Like his run on Excalibur was not the greatest, not the original Excalibur, new Excalibur. When Professor X is getting out of his wheelchair and is saying, "Oh, that totally hurts. That so totally hurts." That's what he says. Omar, do you like any comic book written by Bendis? Um, I loved Secret War. I thought Secret War was awesome. And I was kind of hoping to have that kind of same tone in New Avengers. Um, what else did I like? I liked the first few volumes of Ultimate Spider-Man. I didn't like any. I didn't like any of his original characters though that he introduced in that series. Uh, his Daredevil was probably uh, to me his best thing, but even that was okay. Yeah, but his, I think Secret Wars is probably my favorite book that he wrote. That was the miniseries that led up to New Avengers, even though it was um, it came out after New Avengers because of the art. How many Young Justice trade paperbacks will we be getting? I'm assuming. Let me see what. It only lasted 56 issues. I assume six or seven, six or seven at most. Um, here's a question for us, do you, from Brian McCormick. Do you own any gallery? Or artist select editions. Which ones do you have? I own zero. Um, all mine are good girl art. <laughs> I like art books, but I just don't. Um, I don't. I like. Uh, I like complete art. I guess. Like so, if uh, if um, like Walter Simonson's store, I know it's been released in artist edition, or in, um, some stuff by Don Rosa. But I like the. The stuff that was, that's in color, so I'm okay with that, and I don't need it to be super oversized to see original artwork either. I know Gabe is a big fan of that stuff, though. Oh, he showed me his Fantastic Four Jack Kirby oversized yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Wow, that thing is really beautiful. I can see why he likes that. Yeah, and that's he almost and, had me get it. And that's the thing with me: if I get one, I'm going to in, like <laughs> try to buy them all or the ones that I really like, and because I, I have a condition. <laughs> <laughs> of course losing my job kind of put a damper on that condition but you know what i'm saying like that's uh that's the collector mentality i had i'm like oh i really like this i bet i will also enjoy this other artist edition and then that you're just jumping into that rabbit hole that no i can't partake in but totally i can see why people enjoy those now here's a book i need to read i have the bill sinkevich new mutants big they don't call it an artist edition but it's a big giant book the New Mutants by Sienkiewicz. Um, I need to read that. That's on my top shelf with all yeah. my other tall books. His um, his art on New Mutants was a game changer for that book. Hmm. 
And the book itself was fun, but then when he took over, he gave it a realistic dark tone, especially when you get into the Demon Bear saga. It just becomes so damn awesome. Uh, Omar, who is your favorite female X-Men character? Uh, looks? Rogue. All the way. Um, <laughs> as, far, who, as far as the character that I really, really like, I love Storm. Absolutely love Storm. I think she is great, but I also like um, Joss Whedon's um, armor. I really liked her character, too. Uh, Kitty Pride. Oh, Kitty Pride. Man, there's so many. But, I mean, if I had to choose one, it would probably be Storm. And mine is Magic and Emma Frost. And the Stepford Cuckoos. So you have a thing for blondes. Um, looks that way, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Whether they have a personality or not. Okay. <laughs> I, I see. Thought about that. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that at all. Okay, man, you're also getting a you know a therapist session here. <laughs> My therapist is also blonde. <laughs> <laughs> you guys own any Wonder Woman books, Omnis at all? If so, which ones? Uh, oh my gosh, I own so Queen many. Exorcist. Yes, I own pretty much if it's been collected after Crisis on Infinite Earths, I own it. Um, I did a video last year sometime of like must read collected edition Wonder Woman books on my channel near mint condition shameless plug and um, i kind of go through what my favorite eras were of um wonder woman greg rucka being my favorite writer mm. gail, gail simone um but i have both omnis and we'll be getting the third george perez omnibus i believe jess owns the absolutes by azarello and chang if i'm not correct. mistaken you are correct and but i own the rest in trade paperbacks and i even have two custom bound books Mm. that read right after the George Perez stuff. So it's the William Messner Loeb's Mike Deotato run that lead all the way up to, until the John Byrne run. Yeah. So I really like Wonder Woman. Me too. I love Wonder Woman. One of my favorite characters in the DC Universe. Lionheart doesn't trust Emma Frost. That's part of what makes her great, I think. I don't trust her either. <laughs> Okay, Michael Curry has Buzima Server Surfer. I like to see that. Mike Zek's classic Marvel stories and Hellboy into Silent Sea. I only buy them when they are cheapish. Yeah, that's another thing about the Artist Edition. They tend to get really expensive. You're welcome. Thank you for checking out the video. Sweet Exorcist. Edgar D. said he just ordered and received the Wonder Woman Absolute Books. Looks interesting. Can't wait to read it. I really like um, Azarello's take on the character. I thought it was cool. Hawk Girl has not had a lot of series. I think she's a great character too, Kenny. Um, the problem with Hawk Girl, not Hot Girl, is that <laughs> a lot... Like, well, no, she had that one year later series written by Walter Simonson and uh, Howard Chaikin did the artwork. But the problem with characters like Hawkman and Hawk Girl is that um, I think DC just didn't know what the hell to do with them because they were forever in that limbo after Crisis on Infinite Earths that they didn't even know what origin to use for them. You know, you had the reincarnation origin. You had the origin that they were really aliens. You had the origin that, no, they, they have been Egyptian gods. And all these stories, like, none of the editors were talking to each other. And I remember Hawkman just being such a cluster because... Nobody knew what to do with the character. Nobody knew, like, well, which origin of Hawkman are we using? I don't think it was until Jeff Johns, or no, no, it wasn't Jeff Johns. Hawk, the Hawk world came out that they were like, no, no, everything before this, throw out the window. And then Jeff Johns did that Hawkman series uh, that I think, uh, was it Palmiotti that took over that series after he left? And then eventually that became Hawk Girl. Um I agree. She is a great character and very, very underused, too. And she was awesome in Justice League Unlimited. So I was hoping with the use of that, like, in that show, that she would get a lot more spotlight. But she never really did. I mean, she joined the J She joined the Justice League again, didn't she? During Meltzer's run? Brad, Mel or Brad Meltzer's run? Jess? Anybody? Bueller? No. no, you don't know? Okay. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I was looking up... Uh a question of um, is there any Mark Wade book you don't like? Ooh, 
and I do have an immediate answer. It's really? Only, yeah, it's the only Mark Wade book that I haven't liked. As hmm. a matter of fact, I hated it so much. It was one of my books I poured root beer on. <laughs> Whoa! I'm curious what that is. It was called Strange Fruit. Never read it, so. Um, let's see. I have it pulled up. So let me. Um, it was just awful. Um, an alien being falls to Earth. During the Great Flood of 27, destined to save a small Mississippi town from certain destruction. In the small town of Chatterley, Mississippi, blah 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 while the rising river and broken levees ravage the former plantation town from the outside, racial and social tensions tore it apart from within. But then an otherworldly being fell from the sky and challenged everything. It was so tone deaf. It was the, um, it was the absolute definition of a white guy trying to write about what former slaves felt like and what racial tension was like in a southern town it was utterly tone deaf and awful it was almost insulting it was so bad um i really the way it was treated it, it's a book about black people without any black people hardly in it and i i really um it didn't sour me on Wade, of course, because I love all his other stuff, but I thought that was a particularly bad book. Man, okay, well, I can say I have not... I haven't read anything that Wade has written that, that, that's that been that bad. I mean, I didn't really... His Avengers was okay. The all-new Avengers that he wrote. I think that might be one of my least favorite things he wrote. But then the Champions book that came after that, I, I found quite a bit of enjoyment out of that. Um, you know, I take it back, though. His X-Men run left a little... Like, he didn't really write that much. It was just, But it was also during that onslaught period. So a lot of that was just okay. Okay, so Sweet Exorcist says, Hawk Girl is back in the new Justice League book by Snyder. She returned in Dark Knight's Metal. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, Jess and Omar, do you like Mark Miller? And if yes, what books do you like? Um, I think I've answered this one before. Mark Miller is okay. He um, is, he, to, well, okay. To me, he's <laughs> a guy that writes fun comics and the dialogue is better, very repetitive and very, I remember many years ago, somebody taking dialogue from his different books and, just scrambling them up between the characters that were saying this dialogue, and they were like, okay, which character said what? <laughs> they all sounded the same. Oh. Um, I've never been a big fan of his, I mean, his stories. I wasn't a big fan of Civil War. I wasn't a big fan of Old Man Logan. Um, Why are you making us read Civil War, then? Because I'm curious to know what you think about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, and I haven't read it in a long time. Um Kick-Ass kick -ass and love kick -ass. Wanted were, were very fun. Comics. I was just going to say, I love Kick-Ass and Wanted. Uh, I did love his Wolverine. I do love Superman Red Sun. Okay, I like that. That was good. Yeah. Um, Nemesis, of course, is one of the worst books ever written. Um, this one advertises like, what if Batman was a cunt? And yeah. I'm, not, I'm like, have you not read Batman? I'm pretty sure he is. <laughs> Mark Miller, so edgy. Uh, <laughs> God. Yeah, I and I happen to like Huck. Um, it, 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 that was a. I, I don't think that book got much love, but I I liked it fine. Um, What's the Secret Service? Did you like that one with Dylan? I I did like Secret Service. Yeah. Um, mm. I did like that. I'm just it, trying to see what else I've got by him. Keep Ultimate, going. Ultimate X Men was okay. Didn't read that. Um. Oh, I think Red Sun, you nailed it. That's probably, to me, his favorite, my favorite thing he wrote. He wrote some issues of Flash with uh, Grant Morrison. I know oh, yeah, Morrison, that's right. I know him and Grant Morrison don't see eye to eye anymore. Yeah, they used to. They were even in a Simpsons episode together. Really? Back in the early 2000s, yeah. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, that, that's about it. I'm, I'm not the biggest Miller fan. But... That's that's cool if you are. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. I am. So there you go. There you, you have it. I always agree. 
That's right. We don't have to agree. Nothing's wrong with Wildcats, Omar. Oh, man. I'm getting a lot of shit for that, huh? <laughs> uh, Peter David has no bad books. John Williams, you're one of my favorite composers, and I believe that is one of my favorite <laughs> statements I have ever read. I, I think you're right. I don't think I've ever read anything by Peter David that I have not liked. Uh, Captain Marvel was solid. Hulk, oh, my God. X Factor, both runs. Uh what was his uh, independent book that he had with George Perez? Oh, what, what was it called? Uh, and oh my gosh, Fallen Angel. That's great stuff. His recent stuff in Scarlet Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, so you're right. Are any of you guys reading James Robinson's current run on Wonder Woman? I have not. Um, mm -mm. And I think I made this statement before. James Robinson, I absolutely... I, I mean, Starman is one of the best comic books I've ever read in my life. And it kind of hurt me to read some of his Justice League books because I'm like, I, this can't be the same guy. And he even used one of the Starman in the Justice League book that he was writing. Um, it hurt me so much that I didn't read like his Fantastic Four run. And I have not read because I'm afraid of not liking his Wonder Woman run. But if you're saying it's good, that's awesome. I know he was he's, he was temporarily there, and somebody else has taken over the book. Uh, what books are the best rereads for you? Starman. Oh, I reread a lot. Um, I could name X Men. X Men. I do a re. I, I do a X Men reread every five years. Mm -hmm. um, from I from Silver Age to current, and it takes a long time, but it's so fun. Go ahead. This is, this is the good thing about having a bad memory, and it's not because I'm old. I've always had a bad memory when it comes to reading, so shut up. Um, I love rereading Absolute Justice or just Justice, and I used to have Justice in uh, comic book form. <clears throat> yes, that's a good one. Uh, I love Absolute Justice. I love uh, the Denny O'Neill, Neil Adams, Green Lantern, Green Arrow omnibus. I reread that all the time. I reread Justice. Um, I'm looking to see what books I go to a lot to reread. Th uh, Justice is the one that sticks out. New Frontier is one that I like to reread. Uh, I probably uh, reread All Star Superman. I probably read it five or six times. And the book I probably read the most. Well, Justice is probably the book I read the most, but Watchmen, um, I think I've been reading that every year since it came out in 85 or 86 or whenever it came out. Wow, that's awesome. High praises for Alan Moore. <laughs> yeah, that was, I mean, that, that, just, going places. <laughs> that just blew the dust off my eyes. Um, it was definitely a different form of storytelling for back in 85, you know? Yeah. You, you, were, mean, you were not reading a comic anymore. You were reading a novel. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, one that I, I that's one that I revisit, um, and one that I need to revisit because I haven't read it in a long time is Dark Knight Returns. I need to see how that's held up. I I mean that's another one with Watchmen that blew me away back in the mid '80s that I had never read yeah. anything like it before. Um, and full credit for DC to printing both of those things. Um, I um, let's see for me. Avengers Academy. I'm just looking at my shelf. I reread that quite often. Avengers, Avengers Initiative, Avengers Academy. I read those all, a lot. Oh yeah, you recommended those to me highly. They're they're phenomenal. Strangers in Paradise, like I mentioned, uh, Don Rose's uh, Uncle Scrooge and Donald Duck, um, Ninja Turtles and Transformers by IDW. They are wonderful. And my X Men that I've already explained. Uh, Kurt Busiek's Avengers. Kingdom Come by Mark Wade. Mm -hmm. Sandman is one of those. Now, Sandman is it's not like a quick reread. It takes me a little while because I really enjoy it and I I, I like to see trying to find things that I never noticed the first time around. Mm -hmm. um, Gail Simone's Secret Six, Gail Simone's Birds of Prey, and Chuck. You know what? Chuck Dixon and Gail Simone's Birds of Prey. Chuck Dixon's '90s Bat Family is a fun reread for me too. Like even Asriel. Uh, Robin, Nightwing, Birds of Prey, and um, uh, what? No, not he didn't do Catwoman. Sorry, that was Jim Ballant. And uh, the famous Jim Ballant. 
Yes, for <laughs> what was that really crappy sex book that you used to like? Purgatory? Not Purgatory. Yeah. Uh, Ro uh, the Black Tattoo, Rose of the Rose Tattoo, something. Yeah, tear it. Tarot, 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 the Black tarot. Rose, or That's something. It. Yeah, you. I don't know why you're pretending you don't own any of those. I own. Uh, I, I'm still missing one volume. I yeah, I totally collected them because I want to read uh, just how bad it is. It's like me going to see the room with Tommy Wiseau. I just, I'm drawn to it like a moth to flame. <laughs> I freely admit that I own those. Super Superman, Death and Return, and you know what? Batman Year Two. I am, ah. <laughs> I'm going to be different. I love Batman Year Two. I know Cycle yes, Cleveland gives me a lot of shit for that. I don't care. <laughs> um, here's a good question because I've been looking forward to this book all year, and I just scrolled past it. Anyone getting Super Real Big Cohen asked. Anyone getting Supergirl being super? It's awesome. My fave Supergirl story. Nine out of ten. I've heard huge positives about that book. I cannot wait to get it. That's a day one read for me. I will tear it out of the ISD box, sit down, uh, ignore it for a week. No, I'm going to read it right away. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pop Kaku Piccolo, from, he says, hello from friends, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to offer my heartfelt thanks for this channel. That was really sweet. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. All the way from across the sea. Thank you. Omnibuses bringing people together. Mark Miller bringing people together. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, those are great questions. I, I s often sit here and think, like, what do I reread? Because I, I do reread a lot, and I like to go back and 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 now that we have a new segment on my channel where I get to reread a lot of this stuff, like, and and now my friends are suggesting to read things. I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, um, because we we did uh, Green Lantern Rebirth, and we did the um oh uh infinity gauntlet and that was fun because i hadn't read infinity gauntlet in like 10 years mm -hmm. uh, and i've forgotten how devious and, and and awesome thanos really is and how great adam warlock is at playing everybody oh yeah so it's been a lot of fun doing that so that gets me to get books off my shelf oh yeah irredeemable obviously i read that like once every year <laughs> 55 viewers, everyone else is too hungover. Thank you, Michael Curry. Alex Alex Hernandez, Spider-Man Blue is phenomenal. Absolutely love that. Omar, why did you sell your single comic book collection? Um, I sold most of it, honestly, because I've been um I've been collecting collected editions. So I'm just like, what was the what's the point of keeping all this stuff? I still have like honestly what I've kept has been my X-Men books, like my Uncanny X-Men 95 to, I think, 600 or whatever it was. Um, my New Mutants run, my X-Force run, my, you know, if it was X titles, I kept it. I, I did a custom bind of my Excalibur run because I never thought in a million years Marvel would release an Excalibur omnibus. And knock on wood, they still haven't. I mean, they may, and I may buy it. Um, but... Yeah, that's about the only thing. Like my Amazing Spider-Man run, my Avenger stuff, my Batman books. I I got rid of those um, to to make to make money and to uh, buy more collected editions, like things that I missed that were out of print. Because sometimes that happens. Here's a good question: Which DC Rebirth titles have you guys stopped reading? Uh, Suicide Squad and. Um, what else did I stop? But I kind of regret because I liked it. Uh, New Superman. Mm, yeah, I like New Superman. I did too, and I stopped reading it. I don't know how why. Um, honestly, I stopped reading Green Lanterns and Hal Jordan the Green Lantern. Ooh. I I don't know. I, I mean, they were in. I was enjoying them at first. I don't know why I stopped. Aquam. I stopped reading Aquaman. I have to admit, I stopped reading Aquaman too. Geo's gonna kill us. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Gio. It just wasn't holding my attention. It did in the beginning, but then it sort of wandered for me. Sorry, Gio. I stopped reading Batgirl, and I regret that. I need to pick. I'll pick these up in, in trade, probably. But I did stop reading Batgirl. And uh, I still uh, but, like Batgirl. Uh, I'm gonna stop reading Trinity. That's not doing it for me. Oh, I, yeah, no. I stopped reading Hellblazer. That sucked. <laughs> 
and I stopped reading. Well, I'm gonna. I stopped reading Superwoman because it got canceled. Fuckers. Yeah. And I saw that Omnipool. We were just talking about how Green Lantern's got. John Burns Wonder Woman any good? While you're thinking of that, I'm gonna answer this question. <laughs> he tried to do a little retconning, but the best thing to come out of his run was Cassie. Hmm. He introduced the character of Cassie and who later on became one of my favorite characters in Teen Titans. Okay, so apparently we're missing out on Aquaman. That's what Sweet Exorcist says. Uh, the, I know the art looks amazing in Aquaman. because uh, it's, it's, it, Oh, I, I'm not even going to... It's got a good artist on it. I'm not even going to butcher their name. Uh, Justice League, Tolga, I did stop reading, but I got the Rebirth hardcovers because I like Tony Daniels' art and Brian Hitch's art. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a weak bitch. Why hardcover over softcover? Um, as long as it's an oversized hardcover, that's why. We like big art, and we like more books. Usually with a hardcover, they, oversized hardcover, they collect 12 to 15 issues uh, over the six issues that they collect in trade paperback. That's definitely why. Alex Hernandez, I heard Super Sons is coming back. Did you hear that? Um, Jess? I did, yeah. It's going to be like Adventures of Super Sons or something. It's going to be... Um... Who's the, creative, who's the creative team, though? Ah, uh, shoot. I just read a whole article about it. It's a good team. It's it's the same guy. Oh, it's Peter Tomasi? Yeah. Oh. Um, and they're just yes. uh, restarting it um, in a different format. But it's, um, it's going to be uh, um, like a continuation almost. You'll be able to jump right in and, and keep going with it. I'll, uh, it won't have. It won't be super backstory. You won't need to know a lot about the backstory. He said. Oh, I'm, I'm sold. They're, they're saying Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's only a 12 issue series, though. But that's okay. That will make a beautiful hardcover. Sweet Exorcist. Artemis came from William Messner Loeb series, uh, with Mike Del Tato on art. Um, and be thankful that Omar didn't start that sentence with actually. <laughs> Yeah, I will never do that. <laughs> I will never in my life do that because I hate when people do that. No. She, she, I think it was like Wonder Woman 90, 90 or 91 is her first appearance. And that was William Messner and Loeb and um, Mike Del Tato on artwork. That's when she, Diana, lost the Wonder Woman title. So she, Artemis became Wonder Woman all the way up to issue 100. And I don't want to spoil it in case you haven't read it. But those are great underrated runs. And Artemis, Artemis is now starring in the fabulous Red Hood and the Outlaws. That's right. That is like Jess's favorite rebirth title, which Yay. is I never thought he would say, considering how much <laughs> he loathed <laughs> Red Hood and the Outlaws. Totally New 52. true. Totally true. But like I told you guys, I will so buy that if it's like $30 for oversized Kenneth Rockefeller art. That guy is so underrated. Marvel had that guy and they let him go. I love that guy's artwork. He's not the greatest sequential storyteller, but his art is just so poppy and catchy. It reminds me of like a sketchy Mark Silvestri almost with a little bit of an anime influence. Have you read Conan Wonder Woman by Gail Simone? I have it. I haven't either. I need to. Uh, debating between the Dale Tato or Burn run on, on Wonder Woman. Um, my suggestion is the uh, Dale Tato because that was written by William Messner Loeb's, a very underrated writer. And you don't need to apologize, sweet exorcist. I am hardly ever right on this. Uh, you're show. always right. I'm the one that's oh, always wrong. Well, I'm always right when I, you're talking, though. I mean, when somebody. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's usually Cycle Cleveland out. correcting me on how to pronounce somebody's name. It's right. Miller, not Millar. <laughs> Shit. All right. <laughs> I'll keep my mouth shut from now on. Um, Wait, there was one. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Comics you once loved, but now only find them average. That is a great question. Great, that great is. question. Oh, man. Comics I once loved, but now I find them average. <laughs> Uh, I can answer that to be, uh, and I'll be brutally honest. Um, even though I still buy them, even though I still read them and cherish them, anything Silver Age, <laughs> <laughs> anything Silver Age. I mean, I just consumed um, 
you know, Supergirl and Legion of Superheroes, especially, and and Batman. I was I was a DC guy back then, but I, I read some uh, Spider Man here and there, some Avengers here and there, but I was mostly a DC guy. And I go back to those just to relive my childhood, and they are completely average. They are, I mean, that that was back in the time, you know, early to mid '60s, before. Um, Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams started writing Batman really well. That was a time when a DC editor was famous for saying, what we do is write stuff for eight-year-olds to sit on the toilet to read. That was his quote, and that is what they wrote. Um, Except for Flash. Flash Silver Age still, still holds good. up to me. Yes. Uh, I want to say that... I remember one time thinking that Born Again was the greatest Daredevil story ever written. And rereading it a few years ago, it felt really anticlimactic. Like, I feel like the ending just kind of... I feel like Miller didn't know how to end it. Mm. And it just kind of ends. Like, the rest of his run is solid. You know, it's and it's a solid run. It's a slow start. But for some reason, I remember when I was younger, I thought Born Again was the greatest Daredevil story ever. You know, it, I think... When I think about books, I think it's hard to write a really good ending, an ending ending. Well, it's it's hard to write an ending for a character that continues, right? It's hard, it's hard to write like that. You, you know, somebody else will come in and take over the book. So you have to, you know, you have to leave Matt Murdock the way Matt Murdock is from like at the beginning. You can do all this shit to him. But by the time your run is over, you almost have to leave him the way you found him. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be really difficult, I think. Um now, don't get me wrong. I still think Born Again is phenomenal, but I think the ending, I just thought it was it could have been so much better. Um, and I mean, like, the last three issues, because they kind of dragged. Um, what's another one for me that I held on a pedestal once? Um, <laughs> maybe Batman Year Two. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's just nostalgia. Yeah, I, you know, I could I could easily say all the image titles just about, but when I was younger. But then again, I kind of knew what I was getting when I was buying those books. Um, Justin Omar, what are your favorite comic book covers? Mine are right here. Oh, you have the bombshells. <laughs> They're my favorite covers, and like of all time. Um. Well, they're the only ones I have framed. And anything Adam Hughes draws as a cover is my favorite cover. Um, also, I will say another um, favorite cover of mine is the Neil Adams Superman busting out of the kryptonite chain saying kryptonite no more. I have a huge poster of that in uh, in the other part of the Omniplex, the Omnidog compound. Um I have a huge poster of that. It's one of my faves. And, of course, the Green Lantern, Green Arrow 76, where um, Green Arrow is shattering the lantern with a, a um, arrow. And then Green Arrow, Green, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, I think it was 86 or 85, where Speedy is getting caught shooting up and uh, Green Arrow is saying, my ward is a junkie. Oh, that's a yeah, that's a, that's a classic, man. Yeah. I think mine would be Uncanny X-Men 251, where Wolverine is crucified by the Reavers. And it's, he's just this iconic Mark Silvestri cover of him just on a cross on the X. I love that cover. And then Uncanny X-Men 165, that's the one by Paul Smith, uh, where Storm is... There's three like frames where she's turning into a brood. So she goes from this beautiful goddess to like this ugly alien creature. Um, those, those are the ones. And then, uh, <laughs> uh, Hulk three, uh, three forty, the ground zero where Wolverine's claws make Farland and oh. his, his claws are there popped out. And that is really cool. Hulk on the reflection. I love that cover. That is a great cover. The vision cover, I can't remember the one. It's all red. Oh, is uh, that the one where he, the Avengers one where he's introduced? Yeah, the mm -hmm. I love that cover. Behold the vision, that one. Absolutely love that cover. Is that fifty-seven? I think it. I think you're right. And then, um, I 
Still a sucker for that gatefold cover of X Men number one special edition by Jim Lee. Mm. All my that favorite. Great co- that's a great cover. All my favorite characters all in one cover with Magneto in the end. You know, I, I love that cover. And then come and get me. Oh man, we could do a whole episode on favorite covers. Yeah, that's a good idea. We should. Infinity Gauntlet number four. Come and get me. Yeah. Love that. Lot lots of great covers. We should do an episode on uh, our favorite covers. That's a great idea. Oh, well, I think that was not my idea. Whose idea was that? So we can give him credit. Um, was it uh, Omnipool? Who was it that suggested? Oh, no, it was Lionheart. Thank you, Lionheart. That's a great idea because we'll get Gabe and Riley involved. I'm curious to see what everybody's favorite covers are. Yeah, and before we lose Alex Hernandez, he's asked it twice. Oh, go ahead. I have a red Daredevil. What's a good start? What's a good start to Daredevil? Uh, you're, uh, oh, Man Without Fear. <laughs> I love that. Which was literally the script for the movie that they were going to do. And it's just Frank Miller's script with John Romina on artwork. I think it's a great origin story. Um, so, yeah, Man Without Fear, for sure. And um, I think Bendis did a good job of... Because I want to see Kevin Smith's run was solid too, though. But that was a kind of a different take on the character, and you kind of have to know a little bit about like his um, supporting cast to appreciate the story a little bit. But I would go with Miller, Frank Miller's run. I think it's a great starting point because he introduces a lot of characters that later become an important part of um, Daredevil. What, what would you say? Uh, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that completely. <clears throat> Tolga Burke, but show them also, please. Yeah, we, we do covers. We gather thousands of books and hold up the covers. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I need to find those. Or find the collected versions of them somewhere. Right. Yeah, that'll take some sleuthing, but that'll be worth it. Uh, Frank Frazetta, Vampirella covers. Yeah, those are all pretty amazing. Frank Rosetta. Unbelievable. The guy never took an art class. He just had it naturally. We were very blessed to have him for as long as we did, honestly. Yeah. He was amazing. Totally amazing. I do have a Frank Rosetta, not personal story, but I know when Carmine Infantino was the um, editor back in the, I don't know, 70s or 80s, he, uh, uh, there was a big foo because Frazetta wanted his artwork back. And of course, none of these DC or Marvel ever give any of the original art back. And right. Fantino went to Frazetta's house and said, I will give you all your artwork back if you, and I can't remember that it might have been a Batman book, if you will do some new artwork for such and such a story, a current book. And really? He, yeah, and he said, him. yeah, and he said no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my story. I don't want my art back that bad. Damn, that's crazy. Gabe, you're supposed to be on this. He was driving. Remember? Oh, he's driving. That's right. Yeah, so um, he's driving and watching the show at the same time. That is dedication. That is. Um. Uh. Mladen Kulik had a question that I thought was interesting. Oh, who is excited to see Luis cosplay as Harley Quinn on Omnibros Live? Are you are you, you're familiar with that bet, aren't you, Omar? Yeah, we talked about it on Thursday. Oh, who okay. Is, who is not excited? I think <laughs> Luis might be the only one not excited to lose that bet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yes, Boris Vallejo and um, Julie Bell's artwork is phenomenal. Real Big Cohen. Yeah, I grew up a huge Tom Seaver fan. That's why I'm a Mets fan. And it makes sense that he's your father's favorite player because I'm probably your father's age. Must have a young dad. Thank you. I got you, man. Thank you, brother. Thanks, Jess and 
Omar with the love about the comic book covers. Thank you for coming up with that. That's a great idea. And I can't wait to see what everybody else says in the Omni Bros. I think it's a, it's good because it, you know, we all have different ideas of what good art is. What I like, you may not. Yeah, and I can think of some Silver Age covers which absolutely impacted me to the max. But I'm a, yeah. I may have trouble finding those because they haven't been collected yet for the super for Superman and Batman. Well, there's this thing called screen sharing. I don't know if you're aware of that on the computer. We can look them up ahead of time and then show them, showcase them that way. I am familiar with the concept. <laughs> yes, you caught my sarcasm. All right. Yes. Um, yeah, because, you know, my Rob Liefeld may be, you know, your not favorite artist. So I can, I'm, I'm curious to see what other people think about the covers. Because, I mean, covers to me when I was a kid, that's what sold me on some of Oh, yeah, people. absolutely. Right? And then that's why they started developing these gimmicky covers, die cuts, uh, like, you know, hollow foil and all these crazy 3D cards that used to come with them, poly bag. Yeah. Um, so. um, what character would you be, Omar and Jess, or villain? What character would you be, Omar and Jess, or villain from Toga Burke? Any character. If I'm picking any character to be future trunks from Dragon Ball Z <laughs> <laughs> or, or Wolverine Wolverine for the win every time, all day, every day. I love that character. Well, villain. I'll think about my villain. What about you? Hero? Would you be Harley Quinn? I would be. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, going to um, be awkward. <laughs> um, Swamp Thing. No. Uh, Let's see, who would I be? Uh, no, I can't be Daredevil because he's blind. And I, even though he has heightened senses, I'm, I'm scared of being blind. You're putting a lot of thought into this. I love it. <laughs> I'm looking over. What? Um, who would I be? Uh, you know, I think a good character for me to be, since he's into collectibles and collecting, and he ends up uh, having awesome adventures, is uh, Starman from the Starman Omnibus. I love oh, that he has a collectibles shop. Um, yeah, goes okay. into space with the blue guy, and um, I really, uh, I, I, I dig being him. Okay, no, that's a great answer. Uh, as far as villains, I would be Kang mm. the Conqueror because I like time travel. What about you? Villains, villains. Uh, I like having hair too much, so I wouldn't want to be Lex Luthor. Joker's a little too crazy. Um, villains, villains, villains. Razagul, because he's immortal. Who'd you go with? Sorry, my daughter was asking me a question. Oh, Raza, Razagul. Oh, good answer. Good answer. Yeah, Razagul and King the Conqueror for me. Just a sucker for time travel and back to the future movies. <laughs> future Trunks. Gabe loved that answer. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. He's the, the man. Uh, Daredevil may be blind, but he gets laid more than anyone else in the Marvel Universe. Where, that, is that it, your line that, or did somebody else say that? No, that's uh, Gabe said that. That's true. That is true. He gets he gets a lot of tell. He might not be visually <laughs> enjoying it, but his other <laughs> senses are, you know? I think you know where I'm going with that. I do. Uh, let's see. Doctor Doom is a classic. Poison Ivy, Tolga. All right, Riddler. These are great answers. We can geek them wants to be Riddler. Yeah, I read that. Or one of the new gods. Who? Like Granny Goodness? <laughs> Why do we always assume that it's women? <laughs> I don't know. Um, is Absolute Final Crisis by Morrison any good? I That's a book I have read three times. Mm -hmm. And I still think that it's okay. I may not be as smart as some people, though. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there. Because people claim that it gets better with it with each read, and it it it's and it's so good, but I don't know. I don't 
I don't get it. I think it's okay. It's kind of a clusterfuck to me. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm not reading it in the right order. I don't know. I, yeah. We haven't talked about Final Crisis. What do you think, Gabe? Or Jess? I Gabe. think that... Uh, um, <clears throat> I think you're exactly right. I, it, it, it's not an easy read. Um, I... I enjoyed it, but it's not an easy read. And I've now I've only read it once. Maybe I need to read it more times. Um, it didn't help me. Well, <laughs> I guess that's <was> true. <laughs> um, it's got an awful lot going on in it that I had trouble keeping track of, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. And I don't know where to read the Batman Rest in Peace stuff within there. Like, it. it Maybe the mm -hmm. omnibus that's coming out later on this year will be um, will be a better reading order. I don't know, and it's been quite a while since I've read it, so maybe I do need to reread it. It it does have a lot of back matter and front matter that need to be read in order. <laughs> yes, to fully get it. Maybe okay. Wow, but then I feel like that that's just like me recommending somebody a show a tv show and i'm like oh no wait till you get to season three episode 20 <laughs> you know after you've already spent 35 hours of your life then it gets really good like i you know i don't know maybe i'm missing something uh sweet exorcist is asking what my thoughts are on veronica kell i think that was just ruckus like female lex luther she was okay she, she wasn't my favorite part and you're right i don't and I think she she was in the movie, wasn't she? Elizabeth was it Elizabeth Hurley, I think. But yeah, yeah, she's just okay. Secret identity is a good version of that concept, in my opinion. Isn't that Busick and um Eminem? Yeah. Yeah, that was a good book. Justin That's Omar, go ahead. You know this. I don't even know the second character, so go what? ahead. You know who it is. I know who it is, but I don't know anything about him. <laughs> <laughs> Both these characters' secret identity sucks. One puts on glasses. The other one puts on pink spandex and pretends to be Prince of Eternia. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Superman. Unless Eternia does have a different kind of sun, then Superman's going to be weak. I can't believe I just fucking said that. I sound like a super fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Put them both <laughs> under a red sun and what happens? You got me. You got mm -hmm. me there. Uh, yeah, Superman for the win. On hair, hair alone. <laughs> On hair alone. <laughs> yes. He, man, desperately needs to be updated. Oh, boy, Mladen coming up with the good questions. What comic books had a great story, but it disappointed you with the ending? I think I may have given mine away, maybe with Born Again. Uh, but, uh, no, I don't remember the ending not being that great. Um, I'll, oh, shit. What comic books had a I, great story? Well, you're thinking, I can think of one immediately because, um, and you probably hated this book, um, Uncanny X-Men by Bendis. <laughs> The book was trash from beginning to ending. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Go ahead. I liked that whole book, and I found it interesting, but I thought the ending was uh, – there was no ending. It just sort of blah, 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 blah. It petered out, and, and, it, and there was no resolution or anything, and and I don't feel there's ever been – maybe there's resolution now, but that's you know four years later or whatever, three years later. So that – disappointed me um i sometimes i think bendis does have trouble with endings um <laughs> this is gonna oh, sound this gonna... burke was right on with wake by scott snyder oh yes <sighs> i still love the artwork of oh i love the artwork and i loved the story up until the last issue and i thought what the hell is this this writer is much better than this and I mean, the whole concept and idea was great, and then, boy, that ending was awful. You're exactly right, Tolga. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna. This is crazy, but I actually liked the Clone Saga when it first came out. I thought it was really cool. But then the ending, and then the addition of all these, like, you know, what originally was supposed to felt like supposed to be six or seven issues, they were like, no, let's cash in on this and make it a four year event. So, but. I mean, I, I, I quit reading comics before it was over. Um, so, not the reason why I quit reading. Oh, and I feel like Onslaught was the same way. I think the 
coming of on slut was better than the actual end product of what we got, which is just a gimmick to get rid of these characters for a year so they can lease them out to image creators. I thought that was really, really bad. Um, uh, I am trying to think of other stories that started off great and just the ending was not so good. Yeah, a couple of people are saying Identity Crisis. I wasn't a big fan of Identity Crisis, period. So Me either. We ripped it apart on a previous episode. Um, don't get to, most of my DC books are downstairs, but... I mean, those are the only ones I can think of off the top of my head, honestly. I can't think of... I feel like Warren Ellis, when he starts something and like, he kind of loses interest. Mm. And I'm mainly talking about his X titles. It could be something else. But like when he was writing X-Force or when he was doing uh, – what was the other book that he wrote? Um, Excalibur. Like they started off great, and then by the time he's just – he gets tired of writing these characters. You can kind of tell when he loses interest and it kind of sucks. Yeah. I agree with that. I have only, uh, this is from Mark Rodriguez. I have only read Marvel comics. I'm looking to jump over to DC. What are some good omnis or absolute editions you recommend picking up? Um, I like green lantern. You can't go wrong with Jeff Johns. Yeah, that's good. I Jeff, like it. Uh, um, as far uh, Omnis, I mean, Omnibus, abs, uh, Green Lantern, Flash, uh, Absolute, JSA. Uh-huh, Absolutes, I'd say. I say I'm having trouble saying it. All-Star Superman is good. All-Star Superman. Um, I would say Absolute Batman The Long Halloween. That's mm. a great like retelling of Batman Year 2. <laughs> um, and then... I know people don't, you know, this is one of those books that people either love or hate, but Absolute Hush I thought was awesome. I liked Hush a lot. You get beautiful artwork by Jim Lee and a story that I thought was interesting that kept the mystery going and introduces a new mythos to the Batman uh, world. Um, I like the Absolutes, the two Absolutes, Wonder Woman by Azarello. Those are re new reader friendly because they set her off on a completely different path. Um... Absolute Justice, which I think you already said, right? I think that's a good play. Because it's kind of yeah. a standalone story that mm -hmm. Elseworld kind of tell. Um, and as far as Omnis, I've already suggested the Jeff Johns collection because I, I love that man and about everything he does. I wouldn't recommend jumping in and reading like Infinite Crisis or anything like that. Or oh, anything, no. anything with the word crisis on the title. <laughs> that, that, that could get a little confusing. I would get a little more background um, uh, comic guy asks, should I buy the new Avengers Omni by Bendis? <laughs> well, Omar I, should say I, no. <laughs> if you like the artwork and you, and you don't know that much about Avengers and you like a fun story that will introduce you to, I, cause I think honestly, it's a good jumping on point for people that don't know much about Avengers because I don't think Bendis did either. Um, so <laughs> Sorry, I had to take a quick shot. <laughs> I enjoyed uh, that book. That was one of our know, book reviews, and I enjoyed that book. And I was at a comic book shop working with a friend, and it still outsold X-Men. So people were really loving that book. So yeah, hell yeah, go for it. It's got David Finch on artwork, Steve McNiven. Um, so it's got a great, lots of great art on it. Oh, sweet exorcist. That was really nice. I'm going to binge watch your, watch uh, your videos all day. Glad I found this channel. Really enjoy listening to great insightful comic book conversation. Yes, we pulled, we pulled off another great insightful comic book convo, Jess. Barely. I don't know how we managed to fool people. <laughs> um, because I, I guess between both of us, man, we got about 90 years worth of comic book history here, baby. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> One of us should have an answer. <laughs> and if not, Gabe knows the answer, and he's not on the show right now. That's right. Fooling folks left and right. Yes, that is a t-shirt idea right there. Omnibros live. <laughs> Justin Omar, what comic book series 
you were most anticipated on reading and getting to then be left disappointed? Hmm. Um, New mm. Avengers. Because I like... <laughs> Well, because I like Secret War so much. I was expecting a lot more from New Avengers. Um, what's another? Uh, that's a good question. What was I anticipating? Oh, I, I got you. I got you. Red Hulk. I love Jeff Loeb's DC work. And I love the color books, you know, like Spider-Man Blue and Hulk Gray and all that stuff. So I'm like, oh, shit, Jeff Loeb is coming back to Marvel. Awesome. And Red Hulk was probably one of the most stupidest, well-drawn stories I have ever read in my life. Mm. And it's not until Jeff Parker takes over that book that the book is actually a good book. And don't get me wrong, I will buy the shit out of an absolute if it's at a discounted price because I love Ed McGuinness's take on the Red Hulk. But that book is so stupid. <laughs> so stupid, dude. Um, I was a little underwhelmed by Chris Claremont's return to X-Men the third time around on Kenny X-Men. Um, I thought it started off great. It started with a baseball game and then they went to the Savage Land and they all became dinosaur people and I don't know. It just um, it wasn't as good as I was expecting it to or I wanted it to believe that it was going to be. So th those are some of mine. Um, Gosh, maybe I don't I'm, know that I have an answer. Doomsday Clock. I was expecting Jeff Johns, Watchmen characters, Gary Frank. What could what could go wrong? I stopped reading it as of issue three because I can't. I don't. I don't want to believe that there's a Jeff Johns book that is exists that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> so I may read it in collected edition. It might be a better read, but the, those those off the top of my head are the ones that for me anyway. Um, boy, that's hard for me. Uh... You you seem to enjoy a lot of um, books. I do more than, more than I do. Um, Christopher Keel is saying we should hit up Jim Mint Collectibles and have him guest star on the show. He's been on the show before with Gabe. He, he I think that, that, do, got, he that, that guy that guy hit us up because apparently yeah. he's got a huge following. He's got a huge. He doesn't need us. We need <laughs> him. We, we we need to appear on his show. <laughs> That's what needs to happen. He needs to interview us. There it is. That's it. That's what we need. <laughs> uh, Real Big Cohen says Doomsday Clock has been amazing. Okay, well, so maybe it got better. I don't know. I just i I didn't feel the book needed to exist. And Jeff still can't think of a book that he was disappointed in because that's that's well, what type of comic book reader my man is. He <laughs> enjoys everything, no matter if it sucks ass or not. <laughs> well, the the idea is that I anticipated it and then was disappointed in it. Uh, and I'm and I'm and I'm having trouble coming up with something that I anticipated so much, and then was disappointed in. Um, Has there been a Harley Quinn book that you're like, man, this was stupid? Oh, I know, Suicide Squad sucks. Yeah, but were you really expecting it to be all? Well, maybe I don't know. I, I I was. Yeah, I remember New Fifty Two Suicide Squad. I was. That's a good one. I was really excited for that. Okay. And I was really, and I bought it specifically because uh, Harley Quinn was going to be in it. And yeah, I was disappointed in that. Um, let me think of some. That's a good point. New Fifty Two probably had a lot of disappointments for me. Red Hood um, and the Outlaws. Were you expecting <laughs> a lot of that? No, I wasn't okay. expecting anything out of that, and I got nothing out of that. <laughs> Do you guys still read Valiant Comics? I have not uh, read Valiant Comics. Not the relaunch Valiant Comics. I have not read a single issue of Valiant Comics. I have read the original Valiant stuff, which I really enjoyed, the Jim Shooter stuff. And But as far as like the new Valiant stuff, I think uh, Jim, uh, Gio has read a lot of that stuff, Riley and Louise. And I think you got into a lot of it too, didn't you? I read a lot of it at the uh, January and February last year. I read a ton of it, and I really enjoyed it, but I haven't gone back to it since. I, I really should. At this point, with my memory, I'd be doing a reread of everything to get started again. But I enjoyed a lot of it. I, re I enjoyed everything I read. That's cool. Well, okay. So people are saying that Jim, mean, Jim, Jim, sorry, Jim Mint needs to be on the show. So um, Jess is the Omni Father, Godfather here. So I'll let him do the asking because he he's the one that asked me to be on the show. Um, so I want to be on Jim Mint's show. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking too. I'm like, maybe it should be the other way around. We should promote our show on his show. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah, seems to get can. a lot of uh, followers and viewers. More yeah, than we, we need the followers. Uh, let's see. 
Okay, so Geo is still reading Valiant. Valiant is awesome. Really love Exo Man of War, Archer and Armstrong, and Arbinger. Arbinger. Those are old titles I used to read. What? What? Whatever's old always becomes new again. Stick around in the world of comics. That's the way it is. All right, my man. You want to call it a day? Call it a. Yeah, sure. Why not? We've had right. a great chat. What a great chat this has been. Bunch of yeah. good questions. Thank you, guys. Yes, um, absolutely. Thank you for the ideas and the questions. It's been great. Uh, two last questions. Okay, let's do those. This one's an. Uh, I, <laughs> it's easy for me. Favorite piece of commissioned art? I don't have any. Um. Oh man, I have one, and it, well, okay, I have two stories. <laughs> Um, one, um, okay. So this is a uh, my just this is just a little sketch that Ethan Van Skyver did for me. I still nice. keep. Now, him and I have a um, I have a funny story about Ethan Van Skyver. We kind of had a falling out. I used to have another show call about heroes many years ago, um, but it was a weird personal funny story that I may share one day. But my, my favorite sketch that I've ever seen done. And I've shared this with Jess before. It was my friend Matt many years ago. We went to, uh, I think, uh, Chicago Comic Con. And he we got to meet Tony Moore, the, guy, the artist at the time that was doing... He was just now leaving um, Walking Dead to go and do, like, Fear Agent or whatever. So he's like, oh, dude, I love your covers on Walking Dead. Matt just goes on to him. He's like, can you just draw me a sketch? And he's like, all right, sure. What do you want? He's like, anything. And he's like, anything? And Matt was like, yeah, anything. Okay. He's like, come back tomorrow and pick up your sketch. So we come back the next day. And I wish I could share this. This is such an amazing, this is probably the best thing I've ever seen. Uh, he drew a, um, an uncircumcised penis wearing a top hat and a bow tie and a suit. <laughs> and it's like a hairy, nasty, as wrinkle as peanut, detailed penis. <laughs> Matt's like, I can't, I can't frame this. And Tony Moore's like, dude, you fucking told me to draw anything. <laughs> I still and I'm love like, that story. I'm like, I, yeah, I showed you the picture on the chat. I'm like, I'll take it if you don't want it. I'll hang it on my wall. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite piece of art I've ever seen. <laughs> and then last question. What are your takes on Snyder's all-star Batman? Um, uh, I thought it was okay. I, I thought I it was okay, it too. I did not think it was his best effort. Yeah, John Romita Jr. artwork. Yeah, absolutely. It was okay at best. It was okay. It was worth reading, but it wasn't worth going crazy over. Yeah, it's one that I don't own, so I'm probably going to pass on the absolute whatever edition they're going to release. Okay, so InStockTrades.com, where you can get up to 50% off on all collected editions, 2-3% to loyalty discounts, every quarter an Omnibros Live discount. They have fabulous packaging. Free, free shipping on orders over $50 in the United States and the best customer service around. That's InStockTrades.com. Omar, where can they find you, especially tomorrow night being Tuesday night? Oh, yeah, tomorrow night we have a giveaway episode. It's our fan appreciation episode. This is a big deal. So we're giving. I'm giving away an omnibus. Uh, there's going to be multiple winners. We're giving away, like, four Amazon Echo Dots, uh, a lightsaber, um, like a Stanley loot crate box thing and uh, a Doctor Who goodie bag filled with Doctor Who memorabilia stuff. We'll show it throughout the show. And you just answer random questions and um, try to win. That's that's pretty much it. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's our fan appreciation. That is tomorrow on my channel, Near Mint Condition, at 8.30 Eastern Ta Standard Time. And I think even if you don't get to watch it live, we're going to have one of those prizes be given away to somebody that can just uh, – either comment or email us. So, Near Mint Condition, thank you for watching to those that watch. And to those that don't, maybe tomorrow will be a good day for you to start watching. Yeah. And I'm on Omnidog's Vault, where all you get from me are unsolicited opinions. And on Instagram, on, I'm going to have my daughter help me today on Instagram. I'm sick of it. Omnidog's <laughs> underscore vault. I mean, it's just a bunch of picture taking and hashtags. I'm sick of those hashtags. I think I'm just going to take pictures with no hashtags and you can figure it out yourself. So yeah, that's a bitter old man rant. Okay. So peace and love, peace and love. Thank you very much. Happy Memorial day to those of you. Thank you for your service. Anybody out there who's served 
And thank you for watching. The chat was awesome today. And we love you all. Hit the like button if you can. Subscribe if you haven't. Listen yes. to us on a podcast. Thank you, everybody. Peace and love. Peace and love.